I'd now um, like to introduce Dr Gary Mitchell, who's going to be talking to us about the importance of a diagnosis. So Gary, I'll hand over to you to introduce yourself. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Can you hear and see me OK? Yeah, all good. Yeah, good. Well, the hearing part's probably more important than the seeing. Um, but look, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to be with you all the day from rainy Northern Ireland. Um, I don't know what the weather's like, but it rains 10 months of the year in Belfast, which is close to where I am. My name is Gary Mitchell and I'm a senior lecturer at the School of Nursing and Midwifery at Queen's University in Belfast. I'm also the chair of the Royal College of Nursing's Older People's Forum and um, I have a specialist interest and background in providing care to people living with dementia. Um, I suppose this event for me is is a bit like you know when you go to um, one of these conference or these um, concerts or festivals where you have all these amazing bands on and then in the middle you have a band that is maybe a bit is not as good as the others. So this is how I fear my presentation may come across, but it's it's lovely to be here and hopefully um yeah hopefully hopefully <laughs> enjoy what I'm about to say. <laughs> anyway, amazing event and I suppose I've been asked to to talk about a bit about diagnosis and it has been a constant theme that has came through all the other excellent presentations um, and as colleagues and speakers have said you might think that a, di a diagnosis of dementia is is a bad thing a thing that might be greeted with shock disbelief anger loss and grief I i'm sure that is is true but um as we've heard and um, as people have said diagnosis is is often regarded by people living with dementia and their family members as, as a positive event. It certainly can be, particularly once the shock has worn off. And that's that's my professional experiences as well. But I think importantly, the, critically, the response to, to a diagnosis of dementia really depends on how the person with dementia is, is told about it and how and the level of support that is available to them and their family after diagnosis. So I think it's important for the person with dementia and their family to receive the diagnosis in a positive way, um, obviously with time made available to answer questions and for support and reassurance, you know, at that time. Um, and that's probably more likely to empower the individual and leave them feeling more in control to to make their own decisions um, going forward. Remember that it's their diagnosis, people living with dementia and it's their life that they're living. So so what are the benefits? Um, I think an early diagnosis and provides access to services and support. I think it's we, we all know that. Um, as we said, it, it allows people to take control of their condition, plan for their future, and and live as well as they can um, with with dementia. Um, it um, also is is something that helps the person, I think, to be aware of of what is causing their symptoms. So. Um, it means that any other doubt or fear of other conditions or diseases have maybe gone as well. So it's good to get clarity in diagnosis. If someone gets a diagnosis of dementia, I think it can help people with dementia have access to the right and relevant information, the right resources, support from, from charity or clinicians or experts in the field. Um, and these people and um, these these charities will obviously help the people benefit from the best drug or non-drug treatments that are available because you're dealing with with people with clinical and professional expertise. A, an early diagnosis or a timely diagnosis would give someone a chance to live with dementia to explain um, to their family and friends the changes that are happening in their life in their own words, um, articulate in their own experiences. And I think on a practical level, a person with dementia um, will also have the opportunity to review their financial situation or discuss family, discuss with family um, their preferences for things like advanced care plans or lasting power of attorney and those kind of things. So that the person with dementia has control and an ability to um, articulate the things that they want um, both now and in the future. There's an emerge, there's the strong evidence base out there that says that people with early dementia or with early diagnosis, excuse me, um, can help people with dementia, can help people live independently in their own home for longer because of the aforementioned benefits that were just discussed. Um, it also can help avoid unnecessarily um, hospital admission or care home admission um, because people who know about dementia 
can make adaptations and support people to live live better or live live well as they can in their own communities and local areas. Also, drug and non-drug treatments can be effective earlier when someone's diagnosed, and I'm going to talk about that in a, in a little bit. One of the things that I often get asked in, in, in my, my roles now is about is, is it important to be diagnosed with a specific type of dementia? Do you need to know what type of dementia that you have? And in an ideal world, actually, yes, that is very important. Um, doesn't always happen for obvious reasons. Because when no two people have the same experience of, of dementia, I think if you identify the type of dementia the person has, it'll help families, it'll help carers, it'll help care workers and the person in, in that journey together. So for example, if you were given a diagnosis of, of cancer, you would really expect to know what the best sort of treatment is for this type of cancer, wouldn't you? Whether it's radiotherapy or gametherapy, um, and you'd expect different kinds of programs we put in place. So for example, exercise therapy for people with breast cancer is um, something that is um, is an emerging source of evidence. And it's kind of no different in dementia care. So for example, someone living with Alzheimer's disease, uh, which is the most common type of dementia or even vascular dementia, which is the second most common type, you would expect people to experience, for the most part, memory and communication problems at some stage in their journey. But that's quite different from someone maybe with frontotemporal lobe dementia, um, which more likely could affect changes in personality rather than memory initially. So two quite different um, different things to think about um, when considering that. So I think I think in other words, no one size fits all in terms of diagnosis. I guess to summarize in terms of specific benefits, um, we're all very well aware there's no cure for the dementia diseases, but access to support is is really, really important. And there's fabulous support available from um, professional and third sector organizations. Um, going through the process of, of diagnosis, you know, can be very challenging, but the support available can help the person, you know, take control and be empowered in their own lives. There's a big aspect of early diagnosis being or timely diagnosis being important for for treatment options. So there are cognitive enhancing medications like denepazole or galantamine or memantine that, that can slow progression of dementia, um, even if it's only for a short period. Um, and those are effective most early on in the disease. There's also promising evidence around cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy um, and other um, memory training exercises that can reduce or slow the, the disease progression. And I think these, again, these non-drug approaches can aid the person to maximize their cognitive function, but again, they're most effective early on in the disease. Um, and therefore, um, early timely diagnosis, the more likely these non-pharmacological or non-drug treatments will be to work. There, there's other practical benefits as well, um, which I'm sure everyone on the call is aware of. Um, it, you're more likely to um, be aware of or be protected from from things like um, discrimination because there's protections in human rights and law if you're diagnosed with with dementia and you may also have access to some financial benefits as well um, I know they may not be top of the agenda but there are things that um, can sort of support that person if they get a, a diagnosis and finally, I think uh, I think most of this information will help um, will help the people that that you love or you're going through with this or your care your carers who are providing expert support. It, it'll help people understand what the person with dementia is going through. Dementia can cause changes in mood behavior, and so if if the person feels low or is, gets upset or acts differently or has any of these um, symptoms of the disease of dementia. Then it's it's better it's better that the person with dementia has knows what's happening so they can articulate and explain in their own words what's happening and so that the person and their family or their friends that they're aware of I think can know that this is this is not someone's behavior it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, something that is um can be controlled it's a symptom of of uh, progressive brain disease I think I'm conscious of time I think to to kind of finish off um, what I want to say. I, I think I was thinking of 
you know the major barriers to, to diagnosis and I, I think there there's quite a few and often we we can focus on professional and what was professionals we can do but I think I think we need to do more collectively as society with with the public and really enhance their knowledge of and awareness of dementia and I think there's been a lot of excellent work that's been going on um, in the communities to raise awareness in dementia notwithstanding the dementia friends initiatives that run with the Alzheimer's society and I think the public and the public that I'm thinking of include people who will experience those early symptoms of dement dementia and not know what they are and therefore they may put off seeing a health professional and the public that I'm talking about are also the people who will be caring for family members with dementia or who don't recognize symptoms early or believe that the person who has a dementia doesn't shouldn't get their diagnosis because it would be too upsetting and often these things I think are just because well there's a range of things but often because of poor awareness and poor knowledge about the condition so I think as the society we need to do more to promote awareness about dementia so that it's less frightening to people and promote positive experiences and positive stories um I think the the um I think the public if they're aware that diagnosis is a good thing they more they may more likely recognize early symptoms um, and they may also um advocate for for a more quicker or timely diagnosis so and I guess to, to finish off if you'll if you'll indulge me what I want to do just before I go is I want to share my screen um if that's okay um recently in Northern Ireland we've developed um, a couple of uh, resources with people living with dementia they've co-designed um two resources that have that have been about enhancing public awareness and perception of dementia with the view to um, enhancing knowledge I can share these links after but they have designed a dementia awareness serious game that presents myths about the condition it's free to access it should be on my screen I'll just let you have a look at it now it's very colorful very bright <clears throat> and it presents the player with um, a series of, of myths about the condition as you'll see and um, they'll be able to go through answer some questions about the condition and um, have an idea of these things and what we want to do is we want to promote that people with dementia um, live well be empowered so if we click removing the kettle which what you might you do remove the kettle um, yeah independent important so if there's some things in there that might help and also the, the people with dementia have designed a children's game as well you can see it's a comic book strip so I think um, to close off I think people with dementia are um, inspiring and they can contribute and um, these are the kind of things that they've been developing so I'm going to stop sharing my screen because um, I've run over time but I just want to thank everyone for the opportunity to speak and um, yeah I hope if anyone has any questions happy to take those and thanks thanks so much Steve Thanks, Gary. That's excellent. Thank you so much. I think I particularly liked um, towards the end where you spoke about the barriers for people for getting a diagnosis and then thinking about some solutions around that, around particularly enhancing public awareness. You mentioned the Alzheimer's Society Dementia Friend Sessions. In Gloucestershire, we're just planning some public engagement um, education and trainer sessions. Um, so we've got good links of our libraries across the county. So we're going to be delivering kind of local sessions to communities for anyone who wants to come along. Um, and that's sort of been a real, that's a real, um, uh, you know, so an area that we think is really important, particularly linked with uh, the preventing well and the wellbeing pathway. So, um, so thank you. And um, but also, and also for summarising, um, I'm highlighting the importance of getting a timely diagnosis. And I, and I think that's the key bit, isn't it? That timely diagnosis uh, for people. So thank you. Uh, because we are.